Hello, everybody. My name is Stuart, and welcome once again to another build guide video. Today, we're going to be building the Chimera, a design by Northeast Designs. And I have a lot of good to say about the Chimera. I really like it. It's really cool. Um, the Chimera is... Um, if, if, if the Caliburn and the Talonclaw were brothers, the Chimera is kind of like a cousin to them. It's got a lot in common, but it's also not entirely the same thing. The Chimera is really unique in the sense that it's a rifle platform blaster, but it's in it, it's a bullpup. Or in other words, the magazine loads behind your trigger handle. So in that sense, it's got some different and pretty cool ergonomics. Um, this build guide video is not meant entirely and solely to be a build guide video. Um, I plan on talking a lot about the Chimera, um, as well as kind of giving my two cents on how I think you might want to customize and upgrade your Chimera if you're looking to get one, or if you already have one. Um, and this, and the, these two cents that I'm going to give to you guys doesn't come out of nowhere. I have built a lot of Chimeras. I've been building this style, you know, 3D printed custom Nerf blasters. I've been building them for over a year and a half now, coming on two years soon. And um, I'm hoping that my two cents can be helpful to you guys. However, I am no supreme authority on any of this. Um, if, if you're building something or when you're following along in the video and you see something that I do, um, that, and you want to do it differently, then do it differently. It's, it's totally up to you. That's the beauty of this is you can build your own. Um, I'm just here to kind of share my experience and try and help you guys in building your own Chimera. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's not meant entirely to be a build guide. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about upgrades, ways to get performance, ways to tune it down, etc. So if you're looking to get a Chimera and you're not building one right now, or if you're just curious of learning more about the Chimera, this video can be useful to you. Um, tune in for the end of the video. I'm not offended. Just scroll right to the end if you want. At the end, I'm going to talk about the Chimera and kind of go through those tips that I have about it, what kind of upgrades I recommend, etc. What you see in front of you is the printed parts kit and the Chimera hardware kit that are both available on our website. If you have your own 3D printer, then I highly recommend that you print out your own parts on your printer, and you can find the files that we use on our website. Um, and then you print your own parts, and then you can get a hardware kit from us, and you'll get all the same nuts and bolts that you see here. Now, keep in mind, this, hard, this Chimera that I'm building does have a few upgrades, so it might not look exactly like this. It depends on what upgrades you get. But honestly, I highly recommend the upgrades that are here. I'll, once again, talk about more of that. talk about that more later. The print set that we have on our website, all of the files there have seen some changes since the original Chimera design. Um, it's something that we do for all the blasters that we make here at Frontline Foam. We print it out the first time and we build it and we see how our hardware and our nuts and bolts fit into it and how, and how the assembly process goes for us. And then we make little tweaks and changes to make them build faster, make them build easier and adapt to our hardware. Um, so keep that in mind. Some of your parts may look a little bit different than ours. That's okay. But if you get them from our website, you should get exactly the same STLs that you see here. This is an ongoing process, however, so maybe one or two things might be tweaked later, but that's okay. It's all going to be very similar, and you'll be able to follow along just fine. And another thing to keep in mind, guys, is I'm not perfect. Like I said, I have built a lot of these, but I'm not perfect. And one thing I'm definitely not perfect at is making these videos. I'll say something that's totally wrong. <laughs> or I'll just kind of fumble my words, or I'll try and show you guys something and I'll like be up here like a doofus. Uh, I'm not perfect, so I'm sorry if there's any hiccups that we run into along the way. We're gonna try our best to edit things together and make this as helpful as we can for you guys. And one more thing to mention is that if you are looking at getting this kit and building a Chimera yourself, I'm gonna say that the Chimera on a scale of say one to 10 in building difficulty, 10 being the hardest and one being the easiest. Um, the Chimera is probably at a four or five. It's not too hard, but there are some things that are gonna be a little finicky that you're gonna have to fiddle with to get it working. Um, but it's definitely not uh, impossible at all. It is a blaster that is not easy, but it's still not too much of a challenge to build. So if you're kind of on the fence about it, highly recommend watching this video through and just kind of seeing for yourself. But that's kind of my overall synopsis. 
some chronology for how we're going to go about this is I'm going to throw together this pump handle up here, and then I'm going to work my way back and assemble this kind of trigger and receiver area, and then I'll start assembling some bits and bobs back here, and then as soon as we have the individual modules, I like to call them, I guess, um, we'll start. We'll get the threaded rods ready, and we'll start sliding everything together, and it'll become a solid object, and then we'll be done. Yeah, sure. So. With that, I think we're ready to get moving. Something I like to do with uh, some of these parts before I get started is um, I like to clean these up a little bit. These are fresh off the printer. They haven't been post-processed. They're even still a little fuzzy. I just If you guys printed your parts just like us with the same files, I just want to show you guys a couple quick things to, to look out for. Firstly, on these, you can obviously see they have this big first layer. We're obviously going to want to cut those off, and you'll see me do that in a minute. Um, and we're also just going to pop out those supports, pretty self-explanatory. There is a shaft down here, make sure that's clear of supports as well, for all four. This one, they were already popped out, but they were actually um, design incorporated supports, I guess you could call it. They weren't actual supports from the printer, but there's actually geometry here that used to be there, and that just pops out with some needle nose pliers. Um, we're, are gonna, we are going to have to file down these little uh, bumps later. As well, keep an eye out for any stringy filaments that may have ended up over here. And then for this guy, um, this piece here actually pops out. And it can be a bit tough. There we go. This whole thing pops out. This is scrap. Um, it was just to keep this channel nice and clean. So yeah, I'm just going to clean these up real quick. All right, so maybe you guys noticed me struggle there with the first one. Uh, like I said, there is a shaft that goes in here that does need to be clear uh, for later. But yeah, I just took the blade around. That shaft gave me a lot of trouble. Normally, they just you know you can twist them and they pop right out. Happened with these three, but I actually had to drill this one out. It's three sixteenths, if you're wondering. But yeah, we've got these cleaned up. Um, mentioned these. Let's move on. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to assemble the pump. As you can see, when we line up these two pieces like so, we can see through the four holes here. Kind of hard to show on the camera. What's going to happen is there are hexagonal in, uh, indentations, four of them, on the bottom here. We're going to put four lock nuts. These are 632 lock nuts. into One into each of those slots. And then we're going to take our half-inch 632 screws and come up through the bottom and secure it into those. Now, uh, real quick tangent. When I say 632 and 1032 and 440, I actually just mean different sizes of screws. You'll notice you have all sorts of different types. There are different lengths, and those are easy to figure out. The 632 right here, they're kind of like the medium. The 1032 are the fat ones. And then the 440 are the teeny ones. So just keep that in mind. I hope that kind of clears it up and removes any confusion. Anyways, to get these nuts in there, they're pretty hard um, to, to settle with just your fingers. Case in point. Um, you kind of got to bring them in the best you can into over their groove. And then you can try and push them down. However, sometimes the prints are kind of tight. So I like to take the longest 632 that we have in the kit. And I like to get it in position. Oh, there, it's, it slid down to this one. We'll do this one. In fact, it's easier to see. With the nut somewhat in position, you can bring this bolt in through the bottom. And our goal is to thread the bolt into the nut while it's not in its housing, while it's kind of floating above it. And then after we get the threads to bite just a few times, we will pull the nut down with this long screw into its spot. So I'm going to struggle with this for a bit. Give me a moment and get it started. Oh, 
There we go, actually. I unjinxed myself. So I've got it hooked. I can pull it now, it's threaded. Now I can just pull it down into its spot and there it is nice and cozy in its groove. And then I can back the screw out and do the other three. So we're gonna repeat that process. It is a little tough, but just make sure you get the nuts kind of hovering over their spot, try and keep them level and then bring this guy, thread it in and pull it down. Let's do the rest. Okay, so we got all four of those nuts in place. As you can see, they're all nice and in their grooves, which is just what we want. Now we're gonna take this guy and slide him into place, line up the holes. I'm looking for light in the holes. I hope you can see that. And then we're gonna drop each of these screws and then thread them in. You'll notice that the screws are gonna start threading easy and then they'll get tight. That's because they're hitting the kind of lock mechanism, per se, of the nut here. They're gonna get tighter, but that's okay. You can keep tightening it down and then you'll feel it get really tight. That's when you stop. So let's put all four in. All right, so we got all four of our screws nice and snug. This piece is just rock solid now. And something to check for is look down these kind of circular holes here. And uh, you should not see the screws protrude into that space. Our threaded rod covers, in this case, these metal this metal tubing is gonna need to slide in these grooves. And we don't want those screws to stick through too far and rub on these because it'll scratch them up really bad and make the prime action very stiff. So if you use the right screws, the half inch screws, they should fit right in. And even if you tighten them down, they shouldn't stick out at all. So we're good to go there. Let's assemble the trigger grip handle thingy. I make up names. Um, what's gonna happen here is this trigger is gonna fit into this groove and this kind of trigger piece is gonna slip over everything here and the trigger's gonna move back and forth in this groove. However, right now, mine is super stiff. It's just not gonna move right now, and that, that we can't have that. Um, as I check here, I can kind of rub my finger along this surface and this surface, and I can feel that it's kind of bumpy. There's just some leftover little scuff there from the print, and that's okay. As well as back here, as I mentioned earlier, um, as well as back here, we've just got those little dots from the printer and those ports that were in there. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna take a file and I'm gonna file out the inside grooves of this notch, as well as file the surfaces here, top and bottom, to help promote that sliding action. So I'm gonna file it a little bit, test it, see how smooth it is, file, file it a little bit more, and test it again. My goal is for it to glide pretty well, pretty smoothly, almost no resistance in this groove. So let's get into that. All right, so that fortunately didn't take a lot of work. I can slide it nice and easy. Very little resistance at all. So that's a great sign. Now, if we slide this piece on like so, by the way, do be gentle with these two tabs here. Those can break off pretty easy. Try not to put any serious pressure there. I'm gonna slip this piece into place and I should be able to continue and move the trigger decently smoothly if I'm kind of holding it where it's gonna be. Now, it's not perfect, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go over it again, look at any spots that it might be rubbing, and taking the file to it a little bit more. Um, this could be better or worse in your case, depending on how yours came out on the printer, um, but we're just gonna have to take another look at it, so let's get that done. Okay, so that was super easy. All I had to do was just go over this edge here, and this edge here, they just had some, a bit of an elephant's foot from the print, and that was pinching the trigger. So I got that taken care of nice and easy, and it still slides very well. So we are good to keep going. What I'm gonna do now is hold everything together, and I'm just gonna clean the kind of gunk out of this little spot here so I can fit a screw in. 
I'm going to use a half inch screw and it's going to just fit like so. It's going to go through the gray and then into the blue. Notice that it's going to be a pretty tight fit, so do be ready for that. And just going to tighten that down, but not too much. All right, so you may have seen there that I went in and out a couple times. That was to get the threads gripping properly on the plastic. The first time I went in, it just pushed it back. So if you go in and out just a few times without stripping it, of course, it'll help it seat properly. So there we are. You may notice that it's got a hole down here. That means that I believe in the original design intention, there was supposed to be a long screw here, but that's not actually entirely necessary. And you'll see a bit uh, more as to why. Our goal is to just have this trigger nice and secure. And that is really smooth, so that's a great sign. Now, so it slides onto the top just like this. And with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put um, two 3 8 inch screws, so they're the kind of the stubbier looking ones, uh, in these holes here. Careful not to tighten these down too much. You just want it to, to be enough so it's snug. Oh, and another thing to mention, guys, I used 3 8 here and 1 inch here. I'm not sure the exact counts of the hardware kit to the T, um, but I may end up switching some of these up at some point. So if you have some that are longer later or more short ones later, it's okay. They should be quite interchangeable between their spots. While we're here, we're going to check this hole. It's a frequent problem causer. Um, we're going to check and make sure that our spacer tubing fits into that hole. Um, and uh, right now I can already tell that it kind of doesn't. It's just got a bit of a shortcut that the printer took, which left a bit of kind of a ceiling. So I'm going to have to tidy that up real quick. I'm going to probably take a little file to it. I might drill it, but we'll see. Just going to clean it up so that way we can get this thing all the way in and all the way out easily. All right, so maybe I'm using all my luck points for the day, but that was pretty easy. Um, just took a big round file and quickly went over the roof of the print there. And now it's a little stiff, but that's okay. The point is, is I, I can get this metal rod in and out. So there's that. All right, now we're gonna assemble the Magwell mag release thingy. And I've got two mags here. I've got a Katana mag and a Talon mag. If you get the half dart variant of the Chimera, your blaster will be compatible with both, but only one at a time. You see here that there are two holes. Depending on where we mount this catch tooth, um, will determine what kind of magazine the blaster is going to use. You can change it out later, so don't worry, it's not permanent, but I'm going to be assembling this magwell for Talon mags. But I'll quickly show you how each works, but in the end it's going to be set up for Talon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this magazine in the magwell as if it were, you know, loaded properly. You can see that the holes kind of line up there. And now I can see where the notch is on the uh, magazine. Now I'm gonna kinda take a mental snapshot and if I were to slide this in there I can tell that the hole I'm gonna be using is gonna be the bottom hole. And now if I put in a talon mag it's kinda stiff. That's okay, I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. Um, I see the little groove and I put this in there and I can tell, okay, that's definitely gonna be the top hole. So keep that in mind for when we install this. But real quick, what we need to do is we have some kind of ugly overhang from the print that we're just going to clean up real quick so that way this talon mag fits a little smoother. I'm just going to take a file to this to fix it. All right, so just finished filing that for a quick minute. And now the magazine fits nicely, nice and loose. Uh, that's how we like it at least. So now we remember that it's going to be the top hole that we want to line up. We are going to take two itty bitty 440 screws and one is going to fit on either side in these cutout holes, in these holes. And they're not going to go all the way through obviously. What they're going to do is they're going to poke through just enough for the tips to fit into the hole on either side. So they're both going to come through and just barely pinch on the hole and add a bit of an axis for it to rotate. 
So we're going to need to hold this in place and line up the hole, make sure that we can see light through it. And I'm going to do my best to hold it in place and then put in the screw from the top. And then when I make sure that it's all lined up, you'll kind of, you'll know you have it lined up when you can pivot it, but you can't really pull it out of place. So yeah, I'm going to do a screw on either side. All right, there we go. We've got the mag release in there. If I were to really pull on this, it would pop out, but the point is, is the screws are in there just enough to add a bit of an axis for this thing to pivot around, which is great. Now, if we were to put the magazine in and kind of pull on this and simulate that there was a spring there, magazine doesn't come out, and if I push it in, it falls out. So there we go. Now, to finish this part up, we are going to take a 3 quarter inch 632 screw and we're gonna feed it from the left into the right, and we're gonna tighten this down. And it's gonna serve as kind of a stop for the magazine release. However, we're not gonna tighten this down too much. If we tighten it down too much, it's gonna pinch the mag release, and then the, the, the mag release isn't gonna be able to move. So just tighten it enough to serve its purpose of blocking it. There we go, I hardly tightened it down much at all. And the point is, is the lever can still move, and it just bumps that on its way out. Looking good. All right, now we're gonna assemble uh, this little part that transfers the trigger movement to the sear. What I like to do first is I like to check this right piece. It's labeled RL, right, left. I like to make sure that this hole is clean. We're gonna need to be able to fit a bolt through there. I actually like to drill this bit out. You don't need to, the bolt will fit. I just find that they're a little tight and I like to do it myself. It also cleans it up in one go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our left piece and we're gonna feed our long screw through it. And then we're gonna hold this piece like so, okay? And we're gonna feed the bolt through and you see it's sticking out the other side. And that is going to connect to the right piece. So it's kind of tough, but I'm gonna hold it all together and then tighten this bolt down. I'm not tightening it down all the way because this needs to move freely, but it also shouldn't be like barely attached. It should be it should be in there a bit. There we are. Now what we're going to do is we take these guys and I'm going to be honest guys, I don't know which one's right and which one's left. I just kind of find that either way works. Um but I'm going to take this one and I'm going to well they're the same. And I'm going to orient it like so. See how it's got kind of the bigger ramp up here and I'm going to push the bolt in through there in this orientation, and then put on one, and then two hex nuts, these little hex nuts. And this should still be able to spin. It's pretty important. And I'm gonna do that for both of them. Remember, it's gonna be oriented like this, kind of the bigger, you notice they're asymmetrical, the bigger ramp kind of pointing up, and then push that bolt down through it, and then thread these hex nuts on. Now these are going to attach into these little holes. Notice that there's not a lot of thread, so you know get them in there and then get them snug and then leave it at that. We don't want to strip them. And they're just going to attach to either side. All right, so here we have it. I'll kind of hold it up so you guys can get a better view as to how it goes together. Um, but yeah, a uh, little known fact, the Chimera comes with an action figure. Check this out. It's got like legs and arms. Totally not important and unrelated, just some thought that's been in the back of my head for a while. So yeah, there's that. All right, so here's a quick easy one. Just going to put the sear into his little housing here. Um, notice this hole. It's just going to line up like this. And then we're going to take a 3 quarter inch 632 screw and thread that guy in there. We're not gonna tighten this too much. In fact, I kinda just like to leave it at that. So that way the sear can still spin. I'm technically not all the way seated here. There's a bit more room to go. And that's okay, we just, this is all gonna be covered up later and we want the sear to move freely. It's really important for the function of the blaster later. So there's this guy. Okay, so now we're on to the fun part. 
Um, and by fun part, I mean we're getting closer, and we're going to start seeing the blaster take its shape. Not necessarily like the hard part. But um, what you're going to notice here, and does it fit? Yeah, it fits in frame. Wow. Um, we have three long threaded rods, and one is shorter than the other two. This one that's shorter is going to be our top rod. There's a top, a bottom left, and a bottom right. There's three. So for future reference, the short one is the top one. We're going to take all three of these threaded rods, and we are going to thread them all the way into an acorn nut on one side, each of them. Now we're going to take our muzzle, and we are going to put the short one through the top hole, and the other two through the bottom two holes. So we've got them all pulled through. By the way, guys, the blaster is now starting to take up a lot of room, so I'm really sorry things drift out of frame. I'm going to try my best to keep things in place. Now we're going to take our spacer tubing. This is aluminum spacer tubing. Highly recommend it. I'll talk more about it later. But you're going to take your spacer tubing, and you're just going to slide one over each one of these threaded rods. Now we're going to take our pump grip, and we're going to slide it on next. We've got the pump grip in there. I'm double checking that these spacer tubing are in their grooves that we saw earlier, their circular grooves. Now we're gonna take this big trigger setup and it's got three holes, one, two, three. Remember to be careful with these tabs. And we're gonna thread that on. Okay, we've got this on. Something to keep note of is make sure that your spacer tubing fits into each of the grooves. They actually slide into the plastic, each one, a little bit. And then when you push on this orange piece, you should notice that the orange piece is oriented like so. The barrel is, the, the tip of the barrel thing is pretty straight. I forgot something. We're gonna slide this guy back, and we're gonna slide the mag, the mag well onto that spot right there, and I'll slide everything forward. That's my bad, guys. Sorry. Sorry if I led you astray. There. Now, these three pieces are going to come on next. Something that is good to check for is notice that there's a kind of a hole here and a tooth here. These two pieces are going to fit into each other, but notice how this is pretty tight. I'm actually going to quickly file this tooth down to get a nice fit here. Your prints might have turned out different, but this is something that I've had to do semi-frequently. So I'm gonna do that real quick, get that fit into its groove, and then we'll slide that on in a minute. There we go, that fits. This little tube thing is going to fit in this spot, and now I'm gonna slide it on like so. Next. Let's take our RAM base assembly here. This is a printed RAM base, PLA, with an upgraded RAM core. The normal, I'll talk more about this later, but normal RAM cores are pretty bare. This one has an upgrade here that allows you to fit a magazine over it. It's called the dog bone or Vanguard cut. And then there's an O-ring notch here. I'll, like I said, more on that later. We're gonna throw our itty bitty O-ring into this groove here. And if you want, you can put just like, honestly, less than a drop of lube and kind of rub it around on that O-ring. This will help with air seals later and just overall um, smoothness of the blaster. This is not entirely necessary. It's just something that I like to do. So just a little bit. This is the lubricant that we use, by the way. If you got a hardware kit from us, there will be some lubricant in your plunger tube. Now we're going to take one of these big fat O-rings and put it around the RAM base, just like that. Make sure it's free of any debris. And we are going to take our silicon shock pad and paste it onto the back here. Now we need to peel off this paper. What I recommend is that you kind of fold it like a taco, give it a bit of a wiggle, and it starts to peel off by itself. If you kind of just go at it, you might peel off the adhesive as well, which we don't want. If you do, it's okay. You can always just super glue this onto the back. And we're just gonna center that as best as we can. Give it a bit of a push. And that should stay on just fine. Set that over there. Now, these are the priming bars. We are going to slide them through their, our slits here. 
and here, and we're going to slide them through to the front. And then you'll notice that the holes there line up. And we are going to use these fat, stubby 1032 screws, and we're going to tighten down the priming bars to the pump up here. So let's do that on each side. All right, we've got these priming bars secure to the pump. Now we're gonna slide this ram core, this ram base, um, in between, and you'll notice the grooves that it has. We're gonna get everything in place, and then these 440 screws are gonna come in from either side. And you can tighten these down pretty snug, just be careful not to strip them. All right, guys, we are getting warmer. Getting there. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna, I'm gonna add some lube to this plunger tube here. I'm gonna put an O-ring onto my plunger, get any dirt off of it, and apply some lube here. If you already have lube in your tube from the hardware kit, you can just kind of spread it around with your finger if you want, or you can honestly just put the plunger in it and just kind of wiggle it around like this. This is just how I like to do it. So just getting that lube spread. This is gonna slide over the back here and slide onto the ram base. And notice how the O-ring is sealed all the way around. We didn't pinch the O-ring and peel it off somewhere, so that's good. Now we're gonna take this piece and slide it on to all three rails, just like that. We're gonna take our action figure, and with the left, of course, pointing to the left of the blaster, slide it on. And we're gonna take our sear assembly, and that goes on next. Lastly, we're gonna put our small plunger tube piece into this piece, and slide that on to the back here, just like that. And lastly, we're gonna take this back plate and slide it over all three of these threaded rod. Now, we should definitely put the spring in first. Everything we've done here, if we do run into any issues, we may need to pop everything apart, but that's okay. But we're gonna seal up the back here, and we are going to put 1032 nuts on each of the threaded rod in the back, and tighten those down pretty snug. All right, so I got each of those tightened down, and now this thing is just rock solid, like I can't even twist it. And we can start moving the pump, which is great. However, before I prime it and everything, I wanna get the trigger working. So that's gonna be our next step. So to get the trigger working, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this threaded rod, and what's gonna happen is these 1032 nuts are gonna sit on the end of the threaded rod, and then they're gonna go into these links here, and it's gonna be able to push back and forth between the trigger and the rear. Now, to do that, let's first connect these front links to the trigger. We're gonna feed the bolt through like so. This only goes one way, and we're gonna tighten this bolt down onto the trigger but not too much. We want it to still be able to move. So mine's a little resistant. It's gonna loosen it a hair more. I want it to be nice and loose. Now I'm gonna take this threaded rod and like I said, get the nut started on it and we're gonna feed it through the gap and then pull it back and seat it into its little hexagonal slot there. Now, as you can tell, when we bring this guy over, now th this is kind of hard to explain, I'm gonna try my best. We need to basically distance either by screwing the bolt in further, the threaded rod in further, and making more room, or loosening it to make it tighter, 
So that way, when we pull the trigger, it pushes back on this piece and lifts this sear appropriately. What I'm going to do to help visualize this is actually install this spring. It's the big one. You're going to hook it around this one and then bring it up to the sear. There we go. So now we'll see, we'll, we'll kind of feel it push back down and we'll find where the neutral spot is. So I'm kind of looking at it here. And if I let it rest right here, I see that this threaded rod is poking into this front link only a few threads. What that means is if I put my other hex nut on this guy up front and only turn him on just a few turns, it should be the appropriate distance to give the trigger the range of motion that we want. So we've got it just started. And if I bring this up here, obviously we're not gonna be able to get on. What we need to do is we need to push back and then let go. And when we let go, it should pop into place and we should be able to pull the trigger and watch the sear drop down. So I noticed that my trigger movement was a little gummy. And as much as we tested it earlier, it looks like just with things being tightened down and such, something got stiffer, and that's okay. <clears throat> what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take just a little bit of lubricant, and I'm going to spread it in the trigger area to help the trigger have some smoother movement. Now, coming back to where we left off, I want to be able to set these two in place, and I want this piece to be about right here. I want the sear to be in the up position, and then when I pull the trigger, the sear comes down, and when I release, it comes forward. So mine still isn't as smooth as I'd like it to be, but I think it may be because we're only doing one side, so it's twisting the trigger, so it kind of rubs. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, and we'll check there. Okay, so I just rigged up the other side. I tried to get the spacing as good as I could here. When I pull and look down the side here, this is really hard to show, but I should see both of the nuts up here leave their links at about the same time. Or in other words, I want the spacing on each of these threaded rods to be about the same, because if one is longer than the other, when we pull the trigger, things are just gonna get wonky. They might even fall out of their slots. Another tip, by the way, guys, if you're noticing that your um, link is doing a lot of wobbling, like even more than this, something you can do if you want is you can pop this out and you can put on another hex nut, just one on top of the other, and that'll help it take up more room in this front link and it'll wiggle a little less. I usually don't do that. I don't find it to be too much of an issue when they come together. And uh, like I said earlier, my trigger wasn't coming back. Um, now it is, which is great, but there was something I totally forgot. I forgot to install the spring that goes here. I'm actually gonna use a big spring down here for this gap, simply because the Talon version, the mag release sticks out pretty far and we kinda want a bigger spring for this spot. This one's gonna be a bit of a stretch, literally. Um, the hardware kit, if you have an elite version, should work just fine with the little spring. Um, however, we're gonna I'm gonna have the hardware kits revised so that way they include two of these big springs, especially for the Talon Claw assembly, or not Talon Claw, for the Talon Mag assembly version. So there's that. So with the springs and such and everything in place, it's not done yet, but it should be functional at this point. So let's give it a try and see how things work. We don't have a barrel in, so we're not gonna fire the blaster, but I should be able to prime it. Okay, good, I hear that click. I can pull this forward, that's great. The plunger is in its spot, held, being held in by the sear. Now I'm gonna deprime it. I hold the pump back and I pull the trigger and the plunger should come forward. Now, the plunger did come forward, but I had to help it. I had to pull back on the pump a little bit, and then I had to pull pretty hard on the trigger. So what that says is 
my trigger movement isn't enough. I need to be able to pull the trigger more, so that way more upwards force is applied to the sear, and then the sear gets completely out of the way of the plunger allowing it to, to fire. So long story short, I need to loosen the nuts on these rods, so that way the rods are longer effectively, and so that way the trigger has more room to pull. Okay, so it took a little bit of work, but I was able to get the trigger mechanism working nice and smoothly. The tuning that I had done up to that point of these rods gave the trigger the, and this mechanism back here the proper amount of movement. The limiting factor, in fact, was the sear, or so I think for now. Um, what I did is I ended up just filing off the upper front part of the sear to give it some more room so it would stop bumping this piece. Now, this is, some, this is a modification that I had to do. What's gonna happen is I'm going to make sure that this file gets updated, so that way you don't have to make that kind of modification. So, really, it's kind of redundant that I'm even telling you. So, I was able to get it working. We got these trigger rods balanced properly. They're kind of equal tension on either side. It's okay if they have a little bit of this wiggle, that's totally fine, but the point is we can unhinge, or we can get the sear to release the plunger properly, which is great. Okay, so with the trigger and sear link all working, let's finish throwing together the blaster. What I'm gonna do first is I am going to slide in this kind of bottom cover. This is a bit tricky, but you notice it's got these grooves here that lines up with these grooves. And basically the action I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in like this and then bump it down. Going to make sure it's around the two tabs. Oops. And then just bump it into place like that. And now I'm going to slide on this butt plate, which slides on over each of those three nuts. I'm going to take four three quarter inch 632 screws. And there's a, those are gonna feed into these back four holes here. They're gonna go through this and then they're gonna drill into this piece. These are gonna be pretty decently snug, but remember not to be too tight on them. Now you'll notice these two holes on either side. Um, you can do either or, you can take one of these little screws and put them in there. I like to use some of these leftover 440 screws personally. Just one on either side, not too tight. Now let's put in the barrel. This is a 16 inch barrel, it's standard. We're gonna slide it in through the front and it's gonna seat flush with this gray piece here. So just straight in, kinda trying to my best to guide it in straight. I'm actually gonna prime it to make it a little easier to see what I'm doing. There we go. Gave it a little bit of a twist, and now you can see where the barrel is, that shiny bit. It's just nice and flush with this piece of plastic. And with that in place, we are going to take two more 440 screws, the teeny ones, and they are going to drill in to the, each side of this orange piece, and they are going to gently tighten down onto the barrel. It helps to do them simultaneously. Do one side, get it so it just barely touches the barrel, do the other side, and then tighten each one down slowly so that way the barrel is nice and straight but also secure. So let's do that. All right, so there we go. Got the barrel tightened down nice and snug, nice and even on each side. Now, I can prime it back and I can move it back and forth just fine. And if I fire it, oh, that wasn't a super good seal on my finger there, but um, now we know that the trigger mechanism and everything is working. Literally the last thing we need to do, actually not quite the last, but basically the last thing we need to do is put this trigger guard on. I'm gonna quickly go cut 
a chunk off of right here on the trigger guard, just because I've had to do that lately to make it fit better. The trigger guard as is, when the pump is primed all the way back, the trigger guard can actually get in the way of a full prime. It can sometimes. So as a precautionary measure, I like to take a chunk off. We're gonna have this file updated likely by the time you print your own. So you won't have to worry about this likely. However, if it does, all you gotta do is just nab a piece off of the end here. Okay, so quickly shorten that. This is going to fit into that, into this little groove on this other blue piece. And this is gonna slide into the handle. It's gonna be a tight fit, at least on these prints that I have. All right, so we've got that in place. Make sure that it's at a good angle, that this line on the bottom of the trigger is parallel with this part of the trigger guard. We don't want it to be pushing up because then, then the trigger can rub on it. Because I trimmed this, I'm gonna quickly drill a new hole here. But for you, you're just gonna to have to put in a three quarter inch screw straight through to the other side, decently snug. All right, there's our trigger guard. If we prime it, we see that it doesn't get in the way. We can do a full prime action. Does it fit? Oh, oh. Oh, it fits. Okay, so there's the Chimera. Before I forget, and I forget this a lot, I'm gonna take this itty bitty screw and I'm going to put it on the top hole here and tighten that down. It's not gonna go in all the way and that's okay. It's gonna stick out just a little bit. If you do end up wanting to put something on the rail here, you can totally remove the screw. It doesn't need to be there. It just holds this piece in, which is already being clamped in. So, that is everything, start to finish, the Chimera. Let's put some rounds through it, and then I'm going to start chatting about it. All right, so we've got a few darts here. Because we have the dog bone cut, we can throw the magazine straight in. Not a problem there. Let's put some darts through. Obviously can't show it to you very well. I've got a chronograph here. I think I've got three shots left, and I'm gonna send these through real quick, see what we get. 176. One eighty six. And one seventy six again. I also did this earlier off camera and I was getting about those same numbers. It actually peaked at 197. But there you have it. The Chimera, a really great blaster. All right, so like I said, guys, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna info dump the things in my mind and my, my, my thoughts and opinions and suggestions about the Chimera. If you have a Caliburn or a Talonclaw and you like it, or a U Caliburn or a U Talonclaw or a U Bullpup and you like it, then the Caliburn, the, uh, excuse me, the Chimera is gonna be right up your alley. It's, it's, it's really, in, it really is, sits in that family of blasters, of springers, and uh, it can pack a punch. Just really good stuff there. Um, this isn't gonna have any particular organization to it. I think I'm just gonna work front to back and chat about some of the upgrades that you can have. On the front, you can have a scar barrel attachment, which essentially adds a few inches of rifling to the front of your barrel, which can promote greater accuracy. You can have upgraded barrels. This barrel is our default barrel. The inner diameter of this barrel is 0.527 inches. Now that gives a, a good fit on a dart. It's not tight, but it's also not loose. It's a good fit for a dart, and that's why we use it as default. You can have, this is a 16 inch barrel, it is default. You can have an 18 inch barrel, um, and I believe you could probably do a 14 inch barrel in here if you wanted. Now, as we come back, the barrel, what it'll have is it'll have a little adapter in here, and uh, that adapter will allow you to feed the dart in, and then it'll go from wide to tighter barrel. The different barrel types that you can have are a .509, so smaller, inner diameter barrel, which is a good snug fit around the darts. It's not as tight as brass. And then there's a .495 barrel which is, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, a little bit tighter than, than brass. So if you want something that 
hits like brass, you can actually put a 495 barrel on this thing and it'll have very similar performance. I highly recommend it too. It's a really easy way to boost performance there um, with a tighter barrel. This Chimera, I really like um, what this customer chose. Um, these aluminum spacer tubings over the threaded rod are a great idea. They make the entire blaster very sturdy. I'm applying some serious twisting force right here and it's just not budging. Default, however, is nylon spacer tubing, which works. It does work. There's black and white. However, um, even if everything's tightened down nicely, there still can be there still can be a little bit of play in the uh, in the twist there. So for sturdiness, highly recommend the aluminum spacer tubing. We also have carbon fiber, which is just as sturdy as the aluminum, and I guess technically lighter. Um, but it does look pretty cool. So carbon fiber is really great. Highly recommend that as well. But if you're looking for something kind of middle ground that doesn't break the bank, aluminum, highly recommend it. Um, this is the half uh, length version of the Chimera. There's another version of the Chimera that will shoot full length darts, elite darts. Um, and it simply just has a wider mag well. The mag release is just a little bit shorter and the entire blaster is a little bit longer totally fine and it'll fit elite magazines and you can put adapters into it if you want to use the half length darts as well. So if you are kind of new to this hobby and you're not so sold on half length darts, which I highly recommend, or if you're kind of just getting started and all you have are elite darts and you don't want to go out and get your own half length darts, then I highly recommend just getting the normal elite version. Um, half length darts tend to, um, they're, of course, smaller, and they tend to have better range and accuracy, at least in my experience. There's some debate around that. Now, as we move back here to the RAM base, this is a PLA printed RAM base. These work just fine. However, if you want more durability and better air seal, or in other words, longer life and better performance, I highly recommend you get an aluminum or Delrin RAM base. We do offer those. It's a bit more, but they're definitely worth it because they're high quality and they're gonna last forever and the seal is gonna be great. The RAM core, like I said earlier, has an O-ring notch as well as a dog bone cut. I highly recommend both of those. It is really nice being able to add and remove the magazine at your, with whenever you want, basically, without having to pump it back. The plunger here is also PLA printed. We also offer aluminum or Delrin plungers, more durability and better air seal. The spring here is a 10 kilogram turf spring, I believe it's called. And um, it's a pretty, it's a strong spring, but it's definitely not ridiculous. Um, I can prime it quite easily. I wouldn't hand this to a little kid it'd be a little tough, but it's a good spring. And like you saw earlier, it was hitting us to around 180 FPS. So great. You can get an 18.5 kilogram spring, which is really strong. It's not impossible to prime, but it is pretty stiff, but you'll get some good performance out of the blaster if you get one of those springs. So yeah, there's a range there of the different springs you can use. Um, if you get the half length variant, it will work with either Talon Claw, either Talon or um, Katana magazines, no worries there. Um, up at the front, you can get a foregrip, of course. I highly recommend it. This can get uncomfortable pretty quickly. So my favorite is the angled foregrip. That's my choice. You can also get the uh, vertical foregrip. You can get the pyre angle foregrip. I just like the angled foregrip. It's a bit more comfortable in my opinion. Um, but this Chimera really has a lot going for it, especially this particular setup. I, if I were to get my own Chimera, I would probably have one very similar to this. I would definitely opt for the aluminum spacer tubing. Um, I would probably, however, as much as it's a bit pricier, opt for some machined parts back here. And I would probably keep the default barrel, but if I was really going for performance, I'd probably get a 509 or a 495. Last thing, last upgrade that you can get is you can get an aluminum sear. So instead of a plastic one, you have an aluminum one. I have yet to see a plastic sear wear out, so it's not a necessity. However, having an aluminum sear is a, is a, is a nice touch. Um, it does have that added durability. So I think that covers everything. I really hope I'm not forgetting anything. But yeah, here's the Chimera. Really recommend it. Go check it out on the website. It's not too hard of a build if you want to build yours yourself. Um, hopefully this video has helped. That's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching. 
and hope you enjoy it. I'll see you next time.